name's Alexa Garrett and I'm a senior technical consultant here at Cerna Solutions. Today, we're going to cover some notable service portal features and updates in the Paris release of the ServiceNow platform. First, we'll discuss new service portal features, then we're going to touch on a few changes to existing service portal features as of the Paris release. One of the new features we found most exciting was the external user self-registration through the service portal. This enables external users, aka users who do not have login or SSO credentials, to self-register themselves through the service portal. Multiple forms can be created and configured to guide the external users through different registration or onboarding requests. Form options include adding terms and conditions checkbox field and linkable URLs so users can be prompted to read terms and conditions and confirm if they've done so while submitting the form. Other configuration options available are adding CAPTCHA to the form. Uh, also, another configuration that is possible uh, are the post form submission success and error pages. So this is the out of box success page and the error page looks similarly, but the option is there for your company to create their own uh, special and brand specific uh, login and success pages for the end users to be redirected once they've submitted the form. If we look at the configurations here, we can see what it looks like when you create a form. So here I can set the uh, roles uh, assigned to provision users, enabling uh, CAPTCHA, which Google reCAPTCHA is the default here, uh, enabling terms and conditions, and then the URL that terms and conditions goes, goes to if there is one, as well as the description of the form. And then we also have the ability to specify the fields that show on the registration form. These are the out-of-box fields available, but uh, there is also the ability to create custom fields for that particular form, as well as uh, you have the ability to create multiple forms for user registration. Also, a uh, verification process uh, workflow can be set up. An onboarding user workflow can be applied. And uh, here's where we could change the success and error pages, as well as the registration link label, which is what shows on the home page. So if we have the uh, external user self-registration enabled, then we also have the option of adding a link to the login form where the user can bring up the form or the user can be sent to form directly through email or other means. Another feature I can't wait for users to experience is the long-awaited updated standard ticket page in the service portal. This page allows users to view the details of their submitted request. The new version of this page seeks to deliver a consistent user experience while creating a number of configurations so individual request types such as incident versus RITM display request specific information. Along with an improved look and feel to the page, the details of a standard ticket are broken up into three distinct sections. The header section, which displays the record number, created date, updated date, and a state field, and this state field can be configured to another field if needed. The info section, which displays descriptive information like the short description or description fields, and then whichever fields are specified for that request type. 
So for incidents, we have urgency, possibly priority, and some other incident-specific fields, but we also can set different fields for a request item or possibly another record type that uh, fit that item better, such as quantity, stage, state, and the third section is the tab section, which displays helpful information in configurable tabs that are at the bottom of the ticket. By default, activity and attachments uh, display, uh, but there are other possible tab types available, which are the variable editor, the variable summarizer, and a custom tab, which allows you to uh, attach a custom widget and widget parameters. Uh, this is what the uh, variable summarizer looks like, and the variable editor is a read-only version of the fields as they are displayed when you submit them. Taking a look into what these configurations look like on the back end, we can see these different descriptions for the info region, and lastly there is the action region, which you may have noticed on the incident type ticket. And that's in the info section. This uh, action uh, you can set for different uh, ticket types. Uh, in this example, we have an incident uh, with a resolve button. So when I go to click that, we can see that my incident has been resolved. Um, and so it will be updated on the back end. Another feature available uh, from Paris is the delegated request experience, which I am actually personally super excited uh, to see in this release. End users now have the ability to request items and services on behalf of multiple users within a single request uh, in the service portal. So if we look at the form we currently have here, there's a button next to the requested for field, which allows users to also request for um, up to 50 different individuals. And you'll notice this message on the bottom, and that is uh, the access type that's set on this particular item. A delegated request can be configured to specify if a request can be submitted for a user who does not have access to the item. So these particular individual users do not have access to this item, but if we configured it's, uh, the form's access type field, then this would be allowed. Adding this feature is as simple as adding the requested for variable type to the particular form. And other notable uh, pieces is that the multi-user request experience is not available for record producers or order guides. So this is only something that's available on a catalog item. Also, if two-step checkout is enabled, the delegated request experience is not supported. An honorable mention for the new features in Paris is the portal analyzer. And these are analytics that allow administrators of the portal to see a summary of all widgets that appear on service portal pages. And you can use this data to better understand widget customizations and page usage. Uh, the metrics available are last analyzed, so in order to execute uh, and see this information, um, a scheduled job on the portal analyzer needs to be run. But once that's done, a snapshot is captured of all the widgets and their current statuses are logged. So if I open up one of these records here, we can see on the breadcrumbs widget when it was last analyzed, uh, what page it occurs on, what widget in particular this analysis was done on, what its status is, meaning is it out of box, is it customized, is it cloned, is it a new widget, and uh, page views. Uh, and this is zero, I apologize for my little um, icon there, and user uh, count, which is unique to how many users had uh, interacted with that widget within the last 90 days as opposed to page views, which is landing on the page. Um, and that could be multiple page views for an individual user, but this is specifically um, 
an individual user account. There are two new service portal related features of Paris I'd like to cover. So the first one I'd like to discuss is the rich text label variable, um, which allows us to add rich HTML text into the field without doing any other special customizations or um, styling. And then the attachments variable, which allows uh, a button and some text uh, and an easy inline specific uh, attachment variable. Thanks for watching this video on new Paris release features and updates. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. For more information about Cerna Solutions, feel free to visit us at cernasolutions.com or contact us at the information on the screen. Thanks for watching and we hope to connect with you soon.